Speaking on Newsmax TV yesterday, CNN commentator Ruben Navarrete is very blunt about Univision, which reaches millions of Hispanic voters. Univision has again shown itself to be a partisan network in favor of Democrats, looking, making Democrats look good, making Republicans look bad. But what about NBC, CBS? I mean, the, a, lot, a lot of people, including me, would say they're totally biased against Republicans. I agree. I would agree with that as well. I think CNN also fits that category. At times, CNN's probably the bigger problem and affects a lot of the networks as well. They cover the wrong stories. All right. Pretty bold statement from Mr. Navarrete, who is an honest man. Full disclosure, Ruben did say Fox News is biased in favor of Republicans. All right, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. We welcome back the man of the hour who made all this uh, news uh, with us and for us, Ruben Navarrete Jr., our friend, uh, syndicated columnist and CNN contributor. Welcome back, sir. Good to be with you. Right now, folks all across America are thinking, what is wrong with this guy? He went back on this show? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny. You know, my son said, is he mad at you? I said, what, what did I do? I even said, what, I, I even said I, you don't even have to comment on CNN because you work for them. But you, you chose to, and I, I applaud you for that. And, you know, you're a, you're a commentator. You're supposed to say what you think, right? Right, absolutely. It's, it's really weird that I, I'm, not, I'm not in trouble. I should say that up front as far as I know. But it's really weird that people who express opinions for a living and are paid for their opinions might then get in trouble for expressing an opinion. Uh, and so, you know, I, I'm always sort of in that, that gray area when you speak out of turn the way I did. But I only know how to do this job one way, and that's truthfully, with common sense and truth. And for 25 years, I've been doing this on all various medium and networks, and I'm going to keep doing it just this way. Are you surprised that, uh, you know, the, uh, the highest rated uh, cable news show or, you know, in, in the world uh, picked it up and, and went with it as, as a talking point story, which is the lead story, and then had a debate on it with uh, Monica Crowley and a panel? You know, I've been on um, CNN for 20 years uh, and been under contract for eight, and I have uh, been on O'Reilly's show at Fox for seven, eight times, and he's great. Every time I'm on, he's great. He's said great things about me before, so I was not surprised they picked it up. I'm, I'm flattered that he referred to me as an honest journalism uh, journalist. It's important uh, that he said that, and I, I'm glad he did. So I wasn't surprised. What I've been surprised by, Steve, is the fact that people are shocked. I mean, the fact that folks on the right would be shocked that I said that Fox News was clutch the pearl you know, toward uh, Republicans. It was biased toward Republicans. No kidding. The fact that liberals would be shocked that I said that most of the other networks uh, were biased against Republicans and in favor of Democrats. And no kidding. These things are really common sense observations for most of us, and it's a little confusing that folks don't see what we see. Right. I, I, and let me, I, you know, I have no axe to grind with Fox. Uh, you know, I've done Fox radio uh, in the past as a fill in for John, my buddy John Gibson and, and others. But, uh, you know, to, to, you can't really compare MSNBC, for instance, to Fox because MSNBC, you don't find. You know, an honest, open debate with one-on-one -on -one panels uh, like they had about your situation with uh, Monica Crowley and um, uh, right. Kirsten Powers. You know, there's very, very, very few, if any, uh, right. real conservatives a as guests and sure. certainly not as hosts on MSNBC, where Fox, I could run down a list of contributors and a couple of hosts that I would call liberal. Yeah. Here, well, I'm glad you said that about hosts because I think that is a misnomer. You're right about that. There are people who work at Fox who are liberal. There are people that you and I know personally who are conservative who work at CNN. Uh, so when we get into the whole notion of saying an entire network of people is, you know, liberal or conservative, it gets it gets a little bit messy. I would say that on your point on MSNBC, it's absolutely correct. And let me let me stick the knife in a little deeper on our friends over there to say that what galls me is when I turn into MSNBC once in a blue moon, I hear them talking about immigration, Hispanic issues without a single Hispanic on the panel. Because when you're a white liberal at MSNBC, you don't feel you need to bring in Hispanics to be able to bring in that perspective. And I have, as I said, been on Fox News before, and I've been on CNN and elsewhere, where they do bring in Hispanic commentators and journalists to talk about these issues. So that's one of the things that galls me about MSNBC. They are just smarter uh, and, and much more closer to God than the rest of us. So, so, MSNBC, so Fox is much fairer than MSNBC, in your view? I think on that score, yes. But I, you know, here, here's what I see. When I watch CNN or ABC, I see, like, on this week, I might see a whole bunch of liberals and one token conservative on the panel. But when I flip the switch to Fox, I see a whole bunch of conservatives and one token liberal on the panel. Uh, you know, let's just call it, like, call it like it is. I mean, bias, and this is, I think, Steve, one thing that confused me as well. I'm in the bias business. I get paid for bias. I'm supposed to be biased. I'm not afraid of the word bias. As a columnist, as a commentator, when I stop being biased, I start writing things like on the one hand, on the other hand. So the very fact that people were so terrified of the word bias was confusing to me because that's my bread and butter. Right. No, I got you. All right. Uh, what we're going to do.
on the uh, second part here uh, uh, when we come back with part two with Ruben Navarrete is talk a little bit about uh, another piece that he recently wrote, uh, you know, doubling down on uh, Univision and other networks and uh, when it comes to the immigration issue. So don't go away. More with Ruben Navarrete coming up. All right, folks, we continue our conversation with Ruben Navarrete, Jr., syndicated columnist and CNN contributor. And uh, all right, so let, let's talk about um, some of the things uh, that uh, you have recently uh, written about. And, and you talk about how uh, you have you know, more evidence now of anti-GOP bias, not just in Univision, uh, but in the entire Spanish language media industry. Right. This was actually served up to me just today, hours ago, in my email by a group called America's Voice which is a liberal, Democratic-leading advocacy group for immigration in uh, our nation's capital. It takes in millions of dollars a year from Carnegie and the other foundations uh, and uh, tries to get immigration reform through. And it thought it was doing us all a favor by sending out an email saying, hey, there's this big anti-GOP you know, uh, attack on immigration, and look at all these Spanish-language media that are pointing it out. And so what you have is not just Univision, but Telemundo, which is owned by NBC, La Opinion, uh, the major newspaper in the country, a daily newspaper for Hispanics in Spanish. Every Spanish language outlet I can point to has a de demonstrable anti-GOP bias or Republican bias. And the problem I have with that is the Democrats do not show up to the immigration debate dressed in white. They're not the angels of this debate. Their hands are guilty. They're as guilty of anybody as anybody of being the problem in the immigration debate and the reason we're not having immigration reform. So I think these, these Spanish language networks really do a disservice to their readers and listeners and viewers by perpetuating the myth that the Republicans are the only problem. And, and, and what percentage of uh, the Hispanic community in this country do you believe uh, watches these Spanish language outlets? We have those numbers. It's really small. 80% of Hispanics speak English, just like I'm speaking with you now. We take our news in in English. Uh, and so that's the, the debate is really best had at CBS, NBC, ABC, and those places. But here in the case of Univision, when it's tailoring to that Spanish-speaking audience, which in many cases are immigrants who can in fact vote, they're legalized, they're naturalized, they're U.S. citizens, and they're taking their news from Univision, they're getting a very skewed view that somehow if you just got rid of all the Republicans, the Democrats would rain down on immigration reform. It's not that way. Yeah, they had two years to do that and uh, opted not to do yep. it in, uh, in 09 and, and, and 010. But let, let me ask you, what do you think is going to happen here? Um, the Senate doesn't have the votes to, uh, to uh, take what the House passed and, and defund the uh, immigration order of, of the president in the Homeland Security bill. You see, you could, if we had a fair media, uh, they might ask, why would the president put a poison pill in the Homeland Security bill and uh, expect a majority in the House and the Senate to vote for it, uh, on an, with, which includes funding an executive order that they, they don't want? Uh, but, of course, the media, and I'm not talking about the Hispanic media, the media is covering it the other way. Why won't the Republicans just pass this bill without defunding it and then just worry about it separately? Um, so I, I, how is this going to play out? Well, it's, it's a very difficult position for the Republicans because they're fighting among themselves. You know, the Republicans control now House and Senate, but it's Republicans in the Senate that are going to rein in those Republicans in the House. And it was really the Republicans in the House that inserted this poison pill into the, the funding bill for DHS. Uh, to say we want to defund the president's uh, immigration reform measure. And so, to my mind, all I'm looking at is the fact that the party seems at war with itself. The GOP can't figure out what it wants to do with regard to this, what it calls the executive amnesty. Uh, the Democrats just get to sit back and watch the GOP implode over this. Uh, but there's very much a lot of dissension within the party. And don't be surprised, again, if it's the Senate Republicans who end up thwarting the plans of, this, of the House Republicans. Yeah, no, I, 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 that's, that's what's going to happen, uh, or at least, that's, at least the Senate's going to hold firm, whether or not the House will then hold firm on their own and there will be no Homeland Security bill, uh, I don't know. I don't know what, uh, I, I know John Boehner would certainly rather, you know, <laughs> rather do anything uh, than that. I was going to say something, I'd probably get myself in trouble. But anyway, hey, Ruben, great to talk to you. Always appreciate your honesty and candor, and we'll speak to you soon. Thank you, my friend. Take care. Ruben Navarrete, ladies and gentlemen, Jr.
um, uh, joining us uh, once again. Yeah, it's a, it's a very difficult situation. And again, Republicans have to wake up and learn how to combat the media slant on everything from this Homeland Security bill. And you know what? It would be good practice if they started now on this going forward towards the 016 election, whoever the uh, nominee happens to be. Because not only are they going to be fighting the Democrats and the Democrat machine and the Democratic candidate, but the media. How many times can I say that? Give me five is next. Don't go away.